Chapter 9 Wilkes stared at the computer image as the numbers and words swirled into oblivion. Damn. Had to look, didn't you, Wilkes? Had to satisfy your fucking curiosity. Well, now you know. And now that you do, what are you going to do about it? Wilkes slid out of the form chair in front of the military terminal. The room was in the Milcom Library Complex, normally reserved for officers, but he was a special case, wasn't he? And even if he hadn't been given an emergency clearance to use the system, he could have gotten into the files. You didn't do 19 years in the Corps without learning a few things. A few ground pounders sat in booths, working in the stale air as Wilkes walked out of the library. Hard to make rank without combat or off-world duty, at least, and these guys were all cracking the files, studying, hoping tape-learning education would give them some kind of edge. He didn't think it would. He'd have offered them his spot on the mission in a San Francisco second, if they wanted to trade, but that wasn't going to happen. He was going, unless he ran, and he couldn't do that. He'd been running from it too long already. Okay, pal, you gotta look at what you wanted. Now what are you gonna do about it? Walk away? You're probably gonna get chewed to soy pro a few hours after you get to the alien's world. The ship leaves in eight hours, and you are due to log in in six. What else can they do to you? He nodded to himself as he passed a fat major leaving his studies. The major looked at the chevron rocker on Wilkes' sleeve and frowned. He started to say something, probably going to rag Wilkes about being in a restricted officer's only area, but Wilkes turned slightly so the man could see the acid burn scars on his face. The fat major paled, his hands going involuntarily to his own blubbery jowls. Wilkes could almost see his mind working. Here was a non-com who wasn't supposed to be in here, and a ranking officer should check to be sure he had reason and permission. On the other hand, the non-com in question had a face like a bad Holovy monster program, and maybe it was better just to let him pass. Surely he hadn't wandered in here by accident. Somebody must have sent him. Good thinking, fatso, Wilkes thought. He smiled, stretching the scar tissue into a grimace. Okay, fuck it. He was up to here with all this vermin scat. He knew a guy in programming owed him a big favor. Time to call it in. Wasn't like he was going to get to collect old debts much longer anyhow. Might as well go out in style. Wilkes headed to find the man who owed him. The medical complex loomed like a gleaming and ugly beast of stressed plasticrete and ferrofoam and glass as Wilkes left the cab and walked toward it. He had the section, the room number, and a theoretical schedule, courtesy of the programmer in MI7. Getting off the base hadn't been a problem either, even though he was restricted. For every system they made to do something, there was a way around it. Rank might have its privileges, but the guys on the line knew a few tricks of their own. The admit pad on the complex door was an old-style keypad, an antique, but that was why he had chosen this entrance, no eye reader. Wilkes punched in the code he'd gotten. The lock chimed and the door slid open. Hell, this was easier than swatting flies. He walked in. A human guard leaned back in a chair at a desk, looking at porno projection from his handheld vid viewer. He saw Wilkes and the naked bodies vanished as he shut the unit down and glanced at his admission roster. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm supposed to see Dr. Jaren. The guard glanced down. Must have seen Jaren's name. He waved his hands over the console, brought up the appointment list. And you are? Emily Antoon Kadaji, he said, giving the man a name from an old book he'd once read. The guard glanced down. I don't see your name here, Monsieur Kadaji. Wilkes hadn't been able to find and get into the patient file. He hadn't had time, though he had gotten the doctor's name right. I'm a last-minute deal, he said. Somebody canceled. The guard frowned. I'll have to check with the doctor, he said. Fine, check. He gave the guard a good view of his face. Guy with a face like his surely had psychological problems, right? The guard wasn't suspicious, just following the drill. Probably didn't have a lot to do. He had time to watch porno hollows. As the guard reached for the comm unit to call the doctor, Wilkes moved his right hand slowly toward his right hip. He had a multi-charged pistol, a synapse scrambler, nestled in a flex-skin holster on his belt just over his right buttock. He'd gotten the weapon on the black market. 
It was illegally boosted so it could deliver a stun charge at twice the 10 meter distance for approved civilian hardware. Wilkes looked up and down the hallway, nobody around. He pulled the stunner, brought it up, held it in both hands. The heavy plastic felt cool in his grip. It threw a fairly narrow beam. You had to aim it, but he'd had a target laser installed under the stubby barrel. The bright red dot danced over the guard and stopped on his forehead. The guard looked up. Hey! Wilkes shot him. The guard collapsed in his chair. Wilkes moved to arrange him so he looked like he had dozed off. The man would wake up in half an hour with one bitch of a headache, but otherwise should be fine. He pulled the guard's barcode ID off and clipped it to his shirt pocket. It wouldn't fool a scanner if the thing tried to match his retinal patterns to it, but a human passerby would see that Wilkes had a tag and probably think nothing of it. By the time the guard came to, things would be all over one way or another. But just in case, Wilkes bent and fed the security system lock code virus he'd gotten. The computer terminal digested the code. If it did what it was supposed to do, it would affect the main system in this building. Nobody was going to be calling for outside help from here for a long time. Not unless they went to a window and hollered for it. That didn't do anything for internal security, but Wilkes figured he could deal with that. He was a colonial marine by all the gods, and the day he couldn't handle some sloppy rent -a cops he'd shoot himself. He tucked the stunner back in its holder under his civilian jacket and smiled. Time to go pick up his date for the prom. The door to Billy's room slid open. Locked to the bed by the presser field as she was, she couldn't do more than turn her head slightly. Wilkes! Yep, pack your socks, kid. We're going for a ride. He moved to shut the presser field off. How did you... Why? We'll talk later, he said. Right now we need to hustle along. I might have made a couple of enemies on the way in here, and I don't think we have time to discuss it. Billy rolled from the bed. She grabbed a robe and put it on. I'm ready. What, you don't want to fix your hair or spray makeup on or something? He grinned. I'd crawl over broken glass to get out of here. Go. He turned, stuck his head out into the hall. Okay, clear. She followed him into the hall. They were doing pretty well until they got to the elevator's atrium. The tube's doors opened and two orderlies and two guards came out, moving fast. The guards had their stunners out, and the orderlies both waved shockers. Wilkes never hesitated. He pulled a pistol from under his jacket and fired. Billy watched as the little red dot his weapon projected bounced across the heads of the guards and orderlies. Three of them went down, their own weapons clattering quietly on the soft floor. The last orderly, a new one that Billy didn't know, rolled and came up in some kind of martial arts stance, facing Wilkes. Wilkes tucked his weapon away. Stay behind me, kid. The orderly moved in and swung the shocker like it was a sword. Wilkes dodged to his left, slapped the man's outstretched arm to one side, and punched him low on the ribs. The orderly grunted, made as if to turn and swing the shocker again, and Wilkes kicked the man, hitting the side of his knee with the edge of his boot. Billy heard the orderly's knee crack as something gave in it. The orderly's leg folded as he dropped, but Wilkes pulled his foot back and thrust it out again, smashing his heel into the man's head. The orderly flew sideways and slammed into the corridor wall. The stairs? That way! Billy followed Wilkes down the hall to the end. She glanced at the guards and orderlies as she went past. He'd taken them out almost instantly, without even working up a sweat. Why didn't you shoot the last one? She asked as they reached the stairwell. Pistol's charge was depleted, he said. Didn't have time to reload. They went down two flights. Her room was on four. Then Wilkes led her into the second floor. This isn't the ground, she began. I know. They'll have the doors covered by now. We have to find another exit. She followed him. Two was quiet, and they moved briskly, but not a run. A tech glanced at them as they passed his station. Wilkes smiled and nodded. How's it going? The tech nodded back. Then his control board lit up, pulling his attention away from them. Move, Wilkes said to Billy. That'll be the alarm. Billy ran. There was an emergency escape window at the end of the corridor, but it required a staffer to open it. That's a coded lock, Billy said. Yeah, and I didn't have time to get all the exit numbers, Wilkes said, but I have a nifty little master key, courtesy of the Colonial Marine Corps Armory. Billy found out what he meant as Wilkes slapped a wad of what looked like hair gel onto the lock mechanism, squeezed it three times, and waved her back. 
behind them, the tech started yelling, Hey, you two, get away from that window. I've called security. The gel flashed bright blue and started to sizzle as if it were a piece of soy pro on a too hot grill. The lock's stacked plastic casing bubbled and ran like water. Don't look at it, Wilkes said. It'll burn your eyes. Billy turned to see the tech coming toward them. Wilkes! No problem. He pulled his pistol from under his jacket and pointed it at the tech. The tech stopped. He held his hands out in front of him defensively. Hey, hey, take it easy. Get the hell out of here, Wilkes said. The tech turned and ran. Wilkes smiled. Amazing what even an empty gun can do, ain't it? He put the weapon away. The lock dripped into a puddle on the floor, plastic slag. Wilkes kicked the window, and the unbreakable clear flex swung outward on its side hinges. He leaned out, looked down. Too high to jump. We'd break an ankle. He pulled a small device from under his jacket. Billy watched as he unfolded a pair of handles that jutted at right angles from the thing, a rounded square of black plastic the size of a big man's hand. Wilkes pointed the device at the window sill and touched a control on it. It popped loudly. A thin line of white sprayed out from a nozzle on the end and hit the sill. He touched another control and loops of the line paid out. One, two, three, four, he said. Okay, it's set. Climb onto my back, he said. Billy obeyed. With that, he stepped up onto the sill turned to face the hallway, and began to climb down the outside wall. The line coming out of the thing in his hands looked awful thin to support them. He said, Hang on, I'm going to lean back. She clutched him tightly with her arms and legs. Holding them with his arms outstretched, he began to walk backward down the wall. Spider gear, he said. Don't worry, this line will support ten men without breaking. It took no more than a few seconds for them to reach the ground. As she slid from his back, Billy said, where are we going? Does it matter? She shook her head. No, it didn't matter. Anywhere was better than having her brain diced and scrambled. The pair of them hurried away.